the fifth angel sounded his trumpet. Verse 12 tells us that the fifth trumpet is the first woe of the three woes proclaimed by the eagle flying in midair. The sixth trumpet is the second woe, and the seventh trumpet is the third woe. A woe in the Word of God means a judgment of God. It is always a judgment for unrepentant sin, usually the final judgment for those hardened for unbelief after repeated opportunities to repent. The words for star, fallen, sky, and earth are all common, general words. There is nothing unusual about these words. The problem for us today is that although each of these words can mean many things, none of these meanings are out of the ordinary. For example, Uranus, the word translated sky, is usually translated heaven, but can also be translated air. This has given rise to many different conclusions as commentators for nearly 2,000 years have examined the various aspects of Revelation chapter 9. Rather than looking at any interpretation or speculating about the unclear, a few things are obvious. This star is a being, not an astronomical object. This being opposes God. This being was in heaven, then fell to earth. This happens at the sounding of the fifth trumpet. It is not historical from our perspective, so it cannot refer to Satan and the Garden of Eden. It might refer to the war in heaven when Michael the Archangel cast Satan out of heaven in Revelation 12. At this time, the star is given something or some power which allowed beings from some part of the underworld, shaft or well of the abyss, to come to the earth. This power, the key, was not taken by force, but the power, the key, was given to it at this time, late in the Great Tribulation. Physical, material smoke rose from the abyss because the smoke darkened the sun and the sky. Once again, we do not know if the sun had recovered from the earlier plagues of darkness or if this is an addition to them. This word for abyss always refers to the same thing the English word hell, the Hebrew word sheol, and the Greek word Hades all refer to the unseen spiritual world. Part of that world is the place of departed spirits. Those who died in Christ are in blessing and those who died without Christ are even now in a place of torment. There is, however, much more to this unseen world. This part of hell, called the abyss, seems to be the dwelling place of some of the worst beings of hell. While they are truly demonic, they are not the demons which are free to roam the earth today. These creatures of the abyss are locked in there for now and will stay in the abyss until this star opens the abyss with a key at the sounding of the fifth trumpet judgment. The word open is the usual word for open. Beings that had been locked in the abyss are now free to roam the earth. People on earth will see them as material beings, not as ghosts or spirits. Some commentators believe that there is such a tremendous number of these beings that what appears to John as smoke is nothing more than this cloud of locusts. Whatever this smoke is, it will be visible to people on earth when the smoke darkens the sun and sky. The only other time in the Word of God this word locust appears is the food of John the Baptist. Nothing about these creatures, as they are described, resembles a locust except that they swarm. Proverbs 30.27 tells us that locusts have no king, yet they advance together in ranks. These locusts, however, are led by a king. We are not told how large these locusts are, but verse 7 says that they look like horses. Since these creatures of the abyss are called locusts, we must assume that in every way they are not described, they look and act like locusts. They would be the size of locusts, they would fly like locusts, and would swarm like locusts. 
I believe that these creatures have power for five months before they survive. Because they will be released from the abyss only five months before the end of the tribulation. They have power until Jesus Christ returns to earth. Those who believe that the five month reign of these locusts begins earlier in the great tribulation have no information in the Word of God as to what stops them. The locusts came down upon the earth from out of the smoke. They rise out of the abyss in smoke, cover the entire earth, darkening the sun and sky, then drop down from the sky onto the earth with power like that of scorpions of the earth. This is the normal, usual word for scorpions. The word power, however, is usually translated authority or right, as when Christ says, all authority is given unto me. What is the authority or right of a scorpion? God has given a scorpion the right, authority, and power to inject poison into its prey. So the people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads are the legitimate prey of these locusts. Unlike locusts which feed upon plants, these creatures could not harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree. Though fish and animals are not mentioned, we can assume that the scorpions do not harm them either since they are not the natural prey of scorpions. They might not be completely exempt, since present-day scorpions can sting you. These locusts have the specific authority, power, right to torture people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads, but not to kill them. While this seems like horrible cruelty to us, God is giving these people another chance to repent. Instead of repenting, most people attempt suicide but are unable to die. This only lasts five months. But this will be five months of intense pain. As long as they are still alive, they have the opportunity to repent. Death will return from the sixth trumpet judgment and the seventh bowl judgment just a few days before Christ returns.